Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circle of the World podcast, where we discuss Joe Abercrombie's First Law series. I am one of your hosts, Lord Chamberlain Jeffrey, and here are my co-hosts. Arch Lecter George. And Harrison, the Adeptus Historical. Today will be the first of many, well, not many, a few uh, episodes where we interview guests. And today we will be interviewing Will, a.k.a. Sir Spaceman, Lord of the House of the Meme Maker subreddit on this episode. So let's get started. Again, we want to thank everyone that's been tuning in and actually being a loyal fan except for our parents and our siblings we want to <laughs> we want to thank everybody yeah fuck them <laughs> yeah oh, oh uh, yeah we're, we're past our parents now we're past our family now we're like unto these people we don't even know we like them better <laughs> <laughs> but if we could just remind you all to just uh follow us on the social medias and the youtubes and we got uh stuff you know pumping out there you know and that we would appreciate that so let's move on and let's introduce the man of the hour, Mr. Sir Spaceman, a.k.a. Will. Hey. <laughs> Whoa! It's crazy! Come on, come on. No, oh, my God. It's, woo, woo, it's, woo! I, I, like, I like that you use the term Lord, but I prefer I am a humble servant of the people. That's, that makes, that makes I, me suspicious. The people, the, people do, the people do way more work on that page than I do, and I... Yeah, it would never be anything I can assure you without a very active community that is that just wild is just wilding out all the time. I love it. <laughs> well, I mean that's you know fine and dandy and all that, but I mean you are the Lord because if they infringe upon the rules, you will bring down the banhammer, will you not? Will oh, not just me. Oh, not, not just me. All right, you the, delegate. You delegate. I like that. The six, the six other members of the close council will also. <laughs> no, I, I gotta say, we, in terms of like, I, th I think we've only ever done two bands. Um, everything, a lot of the housekeeping, it, it takes care of itself. People, people are very good about, yeah. you know, respecting yeah. each other. And I mean, it, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's a good community, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, fan it's been fantastic. It, it's very low maintenance. I don't really feel like it needs pruning i mean it is you know there's a couple two i'll call them shit kickers that were just stirring the pot constantly and we gave them you know we tried to talk to them reasonably like hey come on you can't post stuff like that and then you know they did it again and you're like all right <laughs> twice as twice as goodbye and then they never reared their ugly heads again so it worked no and that's Ooh. good and i think that speaks to the uh the fandom Right, because on the first law subreddit or on the House of the Meme Maker uh, subreddit, I haven't really personally encountered douchebags. So, like, if you've had to ban two, and how long have you been doing uh, House of the Meme Maker? Ooh, we're about to hit two years. That's, that's crazy. Years. Man. That's awesome. You're telling me if it's been, I don't know, it's it's something. <laughs> Never I anticipated mean, this. Sir, Sir Spaceman Will has uh, supported us since the beginning. He's he has our uh, very first post up. Um, posted. I think is it still pinned? Uh, it might be. I think it, it is. I might have. But I might have just unpinned it. I, I don't know. You I bastard! Might have, just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I might That's have, it. This might episode's have... canceled. <laughs> <laughs> he's off. He's off. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. That's it. I lost it. No, um, but you, I mean, you had us pinned for way longer than we ever wanted. And, yeah. And I, got, I you... listen. I I still don't know how any of this shit works. So I like. <laughs> I, I don't love you any more than anybody else, including myself. You got pinned by accident. Don't kid yourself. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm my lord. Yeah, it's okay, Harrison. I'm, I'm fucking with you. Um, no, I... Yeah, me, I, me and Will are in the same level in terms of technology. I'm like, I don't know how to work Reddit. Yeah, I literally don't. Um, it was kind of funny when I was first uh, gathering mods. Yeah, I inbox them and I'm like, hey, do you want to I see you're pretty active. Do you want to be a mod? And they're like, what does that entail? And I'm like, br I'm like, br brother, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just giving them out like candy, yeah, dog. Putting, putting, on my, putting on my aviators about to fire up like a, like a fighter jet with no clue what the buttons do. I'm like, fuck it. Let's, <laughs> let's go. I'm going to top gun this bitch. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> that's what, yeah. That's how I felt. Oh, Will, wow. is there anything is there anything about yourself that you like to share? 
Like, you know, um, how old you are, what you do, or is that uncomfortable for you? I can cut it I'm going to, I'm going to give all my uh, data out for people to put together. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm like, I'm like, number, please. I'm, I'm like in my late twenties. Um, okay. I teach, uh, I teach middle school. So I, this is, you can kind of see, tough, bro. you are, you can see where a lot of this, yeah, this is an outlet for me. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty like, uh, I've, I've always been kind of involved in like, I, I majored in political science. Um, I've always been kind of civically involved um, where, wherever I'm living at the time. And I also coach, you know, high school sports on the side. So it's busy. Keeps me busy. Awesome. Yeah, that's, good, man. that's great, man. Someone has got to teach middle school because the most. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I'm like <laughs> seconds from running out the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I really, I really do love it. Um, it's, it's tough right now. I mean, you get all the changes and stuff with COVID and whatever, like, it, you know, we're all, we're, we're feeling the aftershocks of, of all that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you know, sticking with it's worth it. It, it a lot of opportunities that are unique. So mm, that's good. That's awesome. And you're you're on the East Coast, right? Oh man, I'm on the East Coast, baby. That's it. The only coast. <laughs> the only coast. Yep. I'm the only the only time zone. <laughs> I'm a I'm a humble humble Bay Stater. I, I don't. I mean, you know when you know when you tell people like, oh, where you're from, you're like, oh yeah, I'm from like Boston. Yeah, I'm not. I don't live in Boston. I live like outside the city. No, I'm not. I don't people people get mad when you say that you're, like, you're not from Boston you're from like, Somerville blah, 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 blah. you don't even live in the city <laughs> do you know where my fucking family's from like that kind of shit so I don't even bother <laughs> so I'm like my family yeah. runs the city <laughs> yeah I'm like yeah I'm like I'm like an hour outside of town I I'm like closer to Providence Rhode Island than I am anything else it, it, I didn't grow up down here. I grew up like north of the city, so I'm a North Shore kid. Shout out to the to the people that know what that means. You can whoever whoever's listening. <laughs> we can we can commiserate. We can commiserate. <laughs> whatever whatever North Shore people are out there slamming, slinging, sucking down roast beefs and like going to Kelly's and shit. They'll get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost. I'm like, what? I have no <laughs> idea. What any of that I'm like, <laughs> who's Kelly? It's a yeah, different, different culture, bro. Different world, man. Yep. So, hey guys, uh, we're actually editing this section or this whole episode later on. Um, I'm doing the editing for once, so sorry if the episode sounds like shit. <laughs> but I am doing the best meme of the week. Uh, of the week, that's kind of a breaking up here. We got to keep up the, the consistency. Uh, George will post it all the website and all that, blah, 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 blah. But the best meme of the week for this week, um, as far as I can tell, <laughs> was something that was only posted a day ago, so yesterday. And it's called Throwback Throwback Meme by user Curlish Grambungle. I think that's the first time he's been on our best meme of the week, or otherwise known as his August fucking majesty, which I've seen multiple times. So shout out to you, man, for posting it. What it is, is when one of the boys misses the boat to England because he's going on a journey with the Magus. And it's... <laughs> I mean, honestly, you'd have to see it. It fits unusually well. I don't know why. I don't know who thought... Oh, that's that's what I see. I see Brent, Jalenhorn, and Caspa. But it's kind of like that Spider-Man villain meme that's super duper old and doesn't even funny me describing it. So I'm going to get back to the real content. Um, <laughs> hope you guys enjoy the episode. Sir, uh, Will... I keep wanting to say for Space Man because I've been saying for so long and, and hype for you coming on. But Will, what um we you know, we asked you, you know, what kind of thing you want to talk about. You know, you started uh the House of the Meme Maker and obviously you've been a part of um uh, the uh, Reddit the first little subreddit. Uh what kind of uh what kind of insight do you have for us when it concerns those two aspects of the internet? Oh um well, you know, I, I, I read a lot of other fantasy. I read, um, by so I don't know. I, I took it like a long time off reading. I think I finished the song of Ice and fire in like 2014. And then I took like, probably honestly, like four years off of reading fantasy. And then I think around 2018, I read, um, I picked up King killer by Pat Rothfuss. Um, and I read those two books. And they're really, if you haven't checked, you should check them out. If, they, if you oh, I, love, I love those books. Yeah, they're really fucking good. Um, they're not done. That's the, <laughs> I, 
I have a couple never friends be done. that have <laughs> no, I, I have a couple friends that have serious problems with series that aren't done. Uh, but I think that if if you're if you don't care and you have there's so much other stuff to read too. If you don't care, like you gotta you gotta check those out. That that's what kind of like led me on a nosedive. Um, and so I read I read all the Wheel of Time books um, between like 2018. I, well, I guess I started them right after I finished King Killer, so 2019, um, and then into COVID, like right around. I finished Wheel of Time right around the right before everything locked the fuck down because I couldn't get library books for a while. Um, but I had started reading um, some Sanderson in the middle of that because I knew he wrote the last uh, three Wheel of Time books and I and a buddy of mine had loaned me a copy of Mistborn like eight years ago. So I was like, oh, I got to pick this thing up and finally read it and give it the fuck back to the kid because <laughs> poor guy. Um, and then I... I That's read, another good recommendation. Yeah, at this point, I've I've read every every printed Cosmere thing except for White Sand because you can't find the goddamn omnibus anywhere and I'm too late. <laughs> <laughs> he's sorry sorry Brando but he's retconning like half the stuff from the first volume that's that's or the first uh, yeah I guess for the first volume that's out um, he's retconned a bunch of it so I, it'll be edited and then re-released I'll read it then yeah but um, how, do you, was, how do you think that um, uh, Joe Abcombe stands up to like other fantasy authors oh he's I, so this is where I'm going with this is I was reading I kind of, I've read all these things like around the same time. So I was, I, I got recommended first law probably like in like 2016 shout out to my buddy, Chris. Um, he was begging me to read it and I did not pick it up until like probably late 2019. I read blade itself and I got stuck. Like a lot of people do. Um, I've been hearing this a lot is that people like don't know where the plot's going. Cause there isn't really a <laughs> plot. And um, I, I, I did happening. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I like I, it, I didn't, but what the I fuck? Yeah, I didn't go back to Before They Are Hanged until like late 2019. Um, and then I started picking everything up. Um, but I really like, I, I finished it I finished it all in 2020. I, I think he stacks up like, I, I, this is, I've noticed this on the first last subreddit. When I made House of the Meat Maker, um, there were, I, you can quote my numbers on me or whatever, there were like 7,500 um, subs to the mm -hmm. first last subreddit. And now there's like 15k or something it's, it's been growing man it's been growing. yeah it's been growing years. and um and so i think like yeah he, i mean he stacks up i mean there's no there, i just, i think of it this way like you wouldn't you wouldn't compare like like i like apple pie and i like lasagna i wouldn't say like lasagna is better than apple pie like you can't really i don't know i don't like comparing fantasy authors about how they're like better or worse than each other i think they're like they're okay. so there's so much to be said and there's so much conversation to have around them i think like when i was reading first law it was really helpful to read something a little more light like i was reading this born <laughs> i read i read warbreaker i went i read elantris and then i i got into stormlight like maybe about a year and a half ago and i finished all four of those um but Having like Mistborn, which is a little Sanderson's writing style is a little more. It's not gritty, like it's it's a little more lighthearted. Yeah, um, but it can. It is serious. Like I think George, you said you've div, you've dove into some Cosmere. Yeah, um, yeah. He, like he has that serious aspect to it, but it's definitely oh, he, nowhere near as much as uh, yeah. There's no, there's stuff. no, yeah. There's no squelching and there's no crunching of bones. <laughs> I, sometimes there is, but there's no squelching and there's no there's no sex. Like Sanderson doesn't really do. He's, he's, I, it's not, I'm not going to like chalk it up to him. God, I love but, the squelch. Um, <laughs> I do too. I like, you can squelch through the mud. You can, the, like a, a hammer pounding into somebody's head can squelch. There's so many different, like sex can squelch. There's so much great squelching to be had <laughs> in the first law. Really, it's like, ah, chef's just beautiful, like beautiful imagery there. It's, it's really disgusting as hell. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, Abercrombie, is I, I i hope that he gets I, I mean i think he is i think it's like people are this is, i think this is what happens is people read like they now that house of the dragons are like people are reading like martin and then they run out of martin and they're like oh who do i who who do i, I see this all the time people are like oh i like this fantasy who should i read next and people are like oh you should check out this you should check out that i think there's some must reads um right now i'm reading uh some robin hobb um i read the uh i've heard of her uh, what the hell do they? What the hell do they call that trilogy? It's the Assassin's Apprentice or the yeah, Farseer yeah. trilogy. Farseer, there what, we go. Farseer, that's the word. Yeah, the Farseer trilogy by by Robin Hobb. Okay, um, I heard of Robin Hobb. So Hobb. I finished I finished that this summer, and I moved on to the Live Ship Traders, which is her next 
She's got like 14 books. I'm never going to finish this shit. It's, I'm going to be in this forever. <laughs> Christ, 14. Good Lord. Yeah. They're, they're not as like pod. I'd say as, no, no way near as much, but they're very much more depressing. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. Yeah. Oh my God. Farseer was like pretty grim. Like I was like, damn, like, uh. Wow. Yeah, like the entire, the entire last half of um, Assassin's Quest is just oh, depressing God, as fuck. Brutal, like, yeah. I can't, I, I can't read this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, God, I still have like four hundred pages left. Like, where is? Can we like have one good thing happen? Like, <laughs> no, I, I think it's cool. Um, I think the I, it's not grim dark. Like that. Like I think in a lot of times in first law, like people's like no good deed goes unpunished. But I think in in Hobbes series, like a lot of people's mistakes go like people make mistakes constantly and they fuck they fucking pay for them. Like you're just mm. you're they're just constantly making bad decisions and you're like, why the fuck would he do that? And then he like, you know, he'll like it's it's centered the first one centers around this one kid and he's way out of his depth like the whole time. Like he he's never good at anything, which is kind of cool. You usually get the the fantasy trope of like somebody being, you know, godly at like even even in first law you get like Pharaoh's just like a beastly archer and like Logan's this like unparalleled fighter. Like they, they don't really like, I don't know, they do get hurt, but they don't like get their asses handed to them. And that's what you can get in Farseer is like the, the main kid just gets his ass handed to him all the time. And that's not a spoiler. <laughs> that's not a spoiler or anything. It's just like, that's go read the book. Like <laughs> kid gets, that his is ass just kicked. the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. He gets his ass kicked. Um, Poor fits. But I think, I think what I was kind of looking at, like I, I don't know. I, I was active. I've been active on Reddit for a long time, but I um, kind of let it. I, I wasn't for a while when I wasn't reading, and then when I got back into it, I when I read like King Killer, the only place that there was like King Killer discourse was Tumblr. So I hopped on Tumblr, and then I like, <laughs> yeah, I got the fuck out of there. And I, uh, <laughs> you were like, moved, oh, fan. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, and I a lot of a lot of a um, lot of Kvoth, I hate that name. Kvoth fan, fan art. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna move what? to Reddit. What was that? <laughs> I'm gonna say it. It's spelled. It's spelled K V O T H E. It's like the most useless name in, for a main character. Kvoth. Okay. I, gotta, I gotta have another sip of my beer. I can't. That my mouth tastes bad saying that. Is, is, it, is it worth my time or energy learning about this, or or no? <laughs> oh, you you should. I think you should read King Killer. I think it's a. It's such a different. Oh no, um, no, sure. I heard of that, and I would like to read it. I'm just. That Kvoth thing is what. Yeah, you, you should just keep it in your head. Probably, it's all a cursed. Right. Uh, it's a cursed phoneme that kva sound. You don't do that. <laughs> okay. We don't do that. All right. All right. Um. So I. So when I got back on a Reddit, like I kind of fired up. I don't know. I like forgot my fucking username, so I like made a new one, and um, I was looking around, and I, you know, I kind of like finished Wheel of Time, and I was like, oh shit, like there's a meme subreddit for this. And I was like, that's that's pretty awesome. Like it's and it's uh, Wetlander humor is like. They are. I'm pretty active. I was pretty active on them. I haven't been Wheel of Time in a long time. It's been a few years. Um, but when the show was out, I was pretty. I was on it. Um, but uh, yeah, and then there's one for uh, Stormlight, and well, I guess the Cosmere in general for Brandon Sanderson. It's called uh, Creme Posting, and it is like <laughs> they are. Those two subs are like hyperactive. Like they're they're like crazy active, and I was like, oh fuck, there's got to be something for First Law. And so I went to the First Law sub, and. Um, I was like poking around. I was like, there's got to be a fucking meme page for this, right? This is like, this shit is just too good. Like, we can't, this is too memeable. It's fucking so, hilarious. How is there not? And so know? there wasn't one. And I was like, well, what if I do it? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the worst decision of my life because now I'm on a fucking podcast in my basement. <laughs> just, oh, God. I'm just staring at or just it might staring. be the best decision yeah, of your life. It, I'm staring at my hands. I'm like, hey. the, there's well, like the ringing in my ears. Yes, Harrison. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a secret. We're all in our basement right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. Um, actually, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in an attic. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm in an attic. Yeah, I can sense it. My wife's, my wife's upstairs, like grading paper. She's like, "Where are you? Where are you doing the podcast?" I was like, "Basement." She's like, "Perfect." I'm gonna work in the living room. But I was like, "This is it, huh?" <laughs> um, no, you but made I, it. But I, I remember like. Um, I guess this feeds into like the the dynamic between uh, House of the Meme Maker and the first Lost sub. I, I think it's like chilled way out now, but um, initially trying to get like attention for the page, like I was cross posting a little bit, and they 
about I don't know, like two years ago, they did not like memes on the sub. They were like, "This is not a this is not a place for shit posting. Like, do not post your shit here." And it was oh. like, yeah, yeah. In, in in all respect to the um, first law Reddit, who is the central page for our content, they do sometimes they they do have certain rules and respectfully oh, we do 100%. follow them and, yeah, and, and like we follow them and everything. But they they have they do have certain rules like you know no no AI art no memes you know they, they right. allow it sometimes but at the same time they're like don't do that ever again. <laughs> Which is yeah. fine, so but also legal, legal, it's legal, nice legal. to have a house with a meme maker to have that we can go to basically just post whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> oh yeah, you could yeah, whatever shit you want to dump, just take your shit. Um we're like we're like the first law toilet. Um <laughs> <laughs> Great, and that's what, where we what shine. Is, what does what does Logan say when he's at in Adjway? He's like pipes under the underneath ground? the ground. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what that's what we are. The plumbing that like runs all the all the refuse of the first law fandom goes right through our pipes. And I, you, <laughs> you are doing a great job, it. Will, of Thank talking you. yourself up. I swear, I really feel you. like the refuse right now. I feel oh, great. I don't. I I no, I'm just. Uh, but um. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was I don't know, like trying to I, I don't know, yeah, I did cross post a couple and they were pretty bullshit about it and I didn't do it again. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. So what I kinda did was whenever some poor dumb idiot would post a meme on the first law sub, I'd comment and be like, Hey, you gotta this this belongs over here. <laughs> this is where it belongs. This and I me. think I think that that was I don't. I, I've never like interacted with any of the first lost subreddit mods, so I don't. I don't know how they like. I don't, I don't know how they feel about me. <laughs> I mean, they're they're nice guys. I think they think yeah, they really like the house. Them. I think it, I could be wrong, but I feel like one of them have even posted on whenever somebody posts a meme, they, they'll be like, "Hey, you should actually take this over to the." Yeah, I, and I and I like that. Like, I can be that repository for the for the waste um and the drinks and <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding for the, i love no. for the fun but, shit dude yeah but there's but yeah i i think that it's it's been a handy like and i i started seeing people do it once i was up to like maybe 500 subs like people started like going and doing that for me and being like oh like there's a meme page that you can post on here's the link to it and it's like then it just kind of spitballed and now we're at like 2500 subs and it's like you know, where I I think there's you know, I think there's a good relationship where like I you know, the first law guys can keep their subreddit free of like clog ups of memes and shit posting, and you know we can have the funny shit. You know that's yeah. what that's what I, yeah. I made it. I made it to have a good time. Like I I, I mean, just, let's be honest, we, we, we all, all thank you for that. <laughs> oh, thank you, George, for. Thank you. Thank it's you for genuinely, <laughs> genuinely one of my favorite um, subreddits. Like I I look on that every single day. You know, I, I do, it's like my morning, it's the morning ritual, you know, I don't shit myself in bed, but I do check uh, House of the <laughs> Meme Maker to see what's up. I'm not, like, screaming for Barnum through the door. <laughs> Barnum! <laughs> yeah, I love Harrison's screams, it's my favorite shit ever. Awesome. Oh, he's, thanks, he's, man. Yeah. Fucking flatheads! Like that. <laughs> so good. So, so good. Um, so, so go ahead. Will, uh, question for you so whenever uh you know like the, the new trilogy came out because that's more modern how do you think that affected like reddit and the internet as a whole you know on how people reacted do you think some of it was more like kind of a star wars reaction where they were like oh i don't like this because this is this isn't what i read originally or was it like a oh. you know a genuine decline in, in oh you all. really you really I want mean, me to I, dig I, in I, huh? I know it's a serious question I so, like, so I have thought about this because I like, I don't know, one of those people that like, I'll read something and I'll like sit there and marinate on it. And then like, I'll have my own thoughts, but they're, ne they're nebulous. Like they don't, I don't, I wouldn't like go and write about it. Like I wouldn't go and sit down and be like, Oh, I thought this, this, and this. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't like set it down. I'm, I'm a person that thinks that you're allowed to change your opinion on shit, like yeah, with, with context and whatever. So I don't like, I'm not going to like put my like, immediate thoughts down to down a pen and paper so i think what i thought um about i i will say like a little hatred i mean i read them all pretty quick um I, but i had to wait for wisdom of crowds so i had a lot of time to and i did i did do all the audiobooks i think twice before was wisdom of crowds came out i didn't get to do a full reread, My man. which i yeah i, I <laughs> 
yeah, I, I didn't get to do a full reread, but but um no, I, I think like when I first read a little hatred, I was um this is a little bit of a culture shock. Like you're going from it's it's like a it's like a twenty year time jump, right? So you're like you're gonna there's gonna be new shit and I really like that Joe took that step to like shuffle some of the old characters off of the playing field and like open it up to a new group. Like I, I think that that keeps everything fresh. Like you're not rehashing shit. Like I think a, a show like The Walking Dead, right? Where like, ah, oh God, I can't even talk about this. But um, <laughs> but like, there's people that are on that have been, that they have been on that show for like it's on the eleventh season. They've been on that shit for like I'll give you a, like Maggie for example I don't hopefully nobody's mad that I'm spoiling the fucking Walking Dead right now if anyone out there is still watching it like good, kudos on you I, I just I quit after the beginning of ten I just couldn't do it I stuck with it that long is shocking um, Jesus it's kind of like how much how much can you put these people through like 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 they just lose shit constantly and I'm like I'm glad that we're not looking at like Logan doing like the same fucking arc again yeah. like i so so i think there's a few things that are better and i think there's a few things that are worse i think that like um i think you guys mentioned it when you guys did your full blade of self review but there's definitely some like clunky uh dialogue in blade itself um yeah. and that's that's gone like that does there is the dialogue in it's the so um, in the Age of Madness is crisp as fuck. Like you could you could write you could take that as a movie script and you wouldn't need to do a ton to it. Like that could be you could speak that as lines. That's how Pacey does it so well. I think is he's like it's like he's on TV like, and he is a TV voice actor. Like I, I think <laughs> like he just treats it like he's on TV and um, and you just do that. I think in terms of like plot, I think a lot of people were and this is. I think Star Wars is a little different from this. Um, I think Star Wars, I think Disney punted the fucking football on Star Wars pretty bad. Um, yeah. And this is just me. I, I never watched Rise of Skywalker. I honestly don't think I will, judging by like things that people said about it. I, I don't usually let that deter me from watching something, but I just... No, man. I, I mean, I get it. Like, I didn't, I didn't watch it in theaters either. either. Yeah, I watched it I, later on because I friend said, oh, I kind of enjoyed it. And I didn't really, but, you know, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, what, I, what about you, George, Jeff? Did you guys watch Rise of Skywalker in theaters? I, like, um, I've voices. watched 10 minutes, and then I, I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was at, I was with a group of friends and I was like, all right, I th just so everyone knows, I am not like a Star Wars guy. I got into it in recent years because you know a couple of my best friends they're into it because and... it's fucking cool, bro. Because it's cool. <laughs> hey, chill out, Jesus Christ, Harrison, you're the <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, <laughs> down boy, down, down, <laughs> heal. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I saw. I didn't see The Force Awakens in theaters. That came, like, by the time I was getting into Star Wars, that already came out. And I watched it. I was like, oh, okay. It's it's all right. It's decent. But I watched the original trilogy as a kid. And, you know, so I rewatched it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Obviously, yeah, CGI and some things, like, is, like, like, you know, clunky. But you can see that it's still a good movie th through and through. And the prequels were... I mean, those things were reviled back then, and there's still there's a lot wrong with them. But you know, in my older age and watching them, I'm like, okay, I could see where this kind of works, I guess. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then, like, the Force Awakens was okay. It was okay for me. Yeah. And then, and then the Last Jedi, I was just like, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I just, yeah. I, I walked out of there and I was like, that was an average ass movie. <laughs> Like me and my boys, and like, listen, like, if anyone's familiar with New Jersey, we grew up in Elizabeth, and so we talked, we were like, that movie was just fucking average as fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, and like, you know, these are hood kids, and they're talking about Star Wars, and like, yo, what? Like, I thought this shit was all hype. <laughs> and it just, it was like, I, and I know that director, Rian Johnson, and I like him. Knives Out, Brick. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's great. But it felt like for Star Wars, he was just subverting tropes just for the sake of subverting tropes. And that's where it doesn't go well. It just in my opinion. In my opinion. That's all. And, yeah. and, and just agree with me. You're in America, free, you know, country, land of the free and the brave and all that. Hey, but, Jeff, uh, Jeff I, hate to, I hate to destroy this, but I think, I think a good portion of our listeners aren't even from America. 
All right. Well, Whoa. Uh, well, <laughs> you say what now? Sorry. There's a what? What do you mean not from sorry. America? Sorry. Wait. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. I'll fix this. I'll, I'll fix this. I know. I know. George is the sole expat on the face of this planet, but America is Earth. Wait. What? America. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Would expat require George to have lived in America and been yeah, born yeah. in America and then moved to the UK? Not that much, Jeff. You fucked we'll it up. Call him, whoa, we'll whoa, call him. We'll call him. Whoa, 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 <laughs> he's the whoa, only gonna be a bitch whoa, to whoa, edit. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. Well, I think that's the whoa. first time in my life that I've ever been described as a foreigner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, am oh, George, I am drunk. I am drunk. You need to. No, I'm. I'm drunk too. Okay. I'm drunk all right, too. I think yeah. we're all drunk, okay. guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm having a cup of tea. Oh, look at George being better than us. Look at George looking down on us from his high horse. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so, fucking so anyway. last last Jedi was average, and Rise of Skywalker, I was just like, I don't. I'm so confused. Fuck this. Rogue One was great, you know. Whatever. Oh, you know, other stuff is cool, but in terms of Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah, I like Star Wars. It'd be cool, but Disney has been weird with Star Wars. I will say that. No. So, uh, We're going Ms. back to first law. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will, how do you think? The first law online, like whether it be your page or the first law page or in other places of, of the internet, um, and just overall popularity, how do you think that's, that's kind of evolved over time? Because you've kind of been at the forefront of it for a little while now, you know, seeing how th- how many followers have joined the first law page or the me- house of the meme maker, I mean. Um, and it's kind of saying we've gotten a lot more people um, jumping on board with the first law, which is great, probably for the same reason you said earlier. But how do you think that has actually changed over time? Whereas first law was kind of like a more obscure, whereas in the past few years it's kind of I think it's blown up quite a bit. What do you think? It, it man, if if I if the sub if the first law subreddit doubling over the last two years is any like indicator, like I think that what you get is like the the blade itself came out in like nineteen ninety nine, right? Am I am I on that? Two thousand five. Two thousand five. Okay, okay, two thousand five. Yeah. But he but he started <laughs> writing the tri- like he wrote the whole trilogy together, right? So he must have yeah. started writing in like nineteen ninety nine, right? That's so there there I am. I knew there was another. I think um, was he was right in he was right in the first law trilogy around the same time that George R. R. Martin was writing Game of Thrones. Okay, so then so like so the, like early nineties. Yeah, I mean, I oh, I think wait. like. Yeah, really, for real. From from what I've seen of interviews and things like that, definitely. Yeah, he, that basically, time scale. he he was reading first. Lo- he was reading Game of Thrones at the same time he was thinking of his own story, basically, which mm. is around the late nineteen nineties. Yeah. Oh, I thought um, I thought he took inspiration because I know he did, he did like, but he was doing it at the same time. Because I, kind of d- like I that together. Interesting. Watch interesting. Joe Abercrombie will come on here and be like, "Hey guys." Uh, he, he'll say it by <laughs> name. He'll, he'll say all of our names. Like, Actually, this is what happened. <laughs> so, all right, let's. Anyways, um, so I think if that's any indicator, I mean, I, I think like I think what, Game of Thrones probably came out in what ninety seven, maybe. I, I would say ninety six. The year I was then, born. <laughs> a, um. So I yeah, I think like I I will say this. I think that people kind of um. You know, I'm not going to discount what anybody says about Star Wars. I think that Star Wars, like they, they did not have a roadmap um, for they didn't they didn't have any like J.J. Abrams does this. J.J. Abrams is the mystery box king, so it's like yeah, he he sets up a bunch of shit in Force Awakens that my geek ass was like freaking out over. I saw the movie three times in theaters, and I was like, but then I like the more I thought about it, I was like, man, that was just a retread of. Uh, of the original Star Wars, like this is just the same. They blow up a bunch of bunch of plucky rebels, blow up a big fucking ball in space, um, yeah. space balls. So, <laughs> space uh, balls. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. I, I like I, I give I give a lot of credence to that. I think the general consensus among people that don't like Age of Madness is that it wasn't what they expected. Like I, I read yeah. a lot on the first loss of people who are like, "Oh, I can't believe Calder died like that. Like I, I didn't want him to die like that." It's like. Yeah, I really didn't either, but like he seemed fucking a ghost of himself the whole trilogy. Like it and he even even still he does have the last laugh. Spoiler alert for all the late spoiler alert. Uh, this is a spoiler oh, it, it, episode, a right? Spoiler oh, episode, yeah, never mind. Right? Forget it. You're good. Uh, but he does have the last laugh. He says to Ricky, he goes, Ah, you don't see everything. And it's like 
okay, I don't know what people are fucking mad about. Like, I, to my mind, I'm like, this is the thing about, like, Joe obviously has a roadmap. Like, what I thought about Wisdom of Crowds was, like, I was kind of expecting it to be this, like, big crescendo. And I'm like, part of me is glad that it wasn't because it means that there's, like, so much ground, so much ground, like, open ground for, like, whatever happens next. There's, there's just so many threads that he can weave in a lot of... He's the weaver. He's the fucking... Joe is the weaver. Joe's the fucking weaver. That's no, it. We, the we should, weaver. That's, a, that's Joe, a secret. Weaver, yeah, weaver, weaver confirmed. Joe's the weaver. <laughs> George R.R. Um, Martin's the gardener, and, and Joe's the weaver. Yes, exactly. So he, he has a plan. And I, he's definitely like, I don't know. I don't keep up with every word the guy says. Like, there's, there's definitely people that do that. Um, but he, like, he's, he's working on some. He's working on the devils, right? Is that what he's doing yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we don't. That's going to be something not connected to first law. And um, I think that when he's kind of like, I don't know. He's also got that like shattered sea trilogy, right? I haven't read that yet. Um, oh, my, the, that's definitely not connected at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. I'd like to read that. I, th- I just think it's not shocking. Oh, that yeah. He wants to. He wants to work on another project real quick. I, I just. I think he has. I think he's. I don't know. I think he's like slowly tying together things that he wants to put together, and then I think that's it. Isn't it? Like, and I think we'd all. I expect. You know, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think I'd much rather he takes his time. And actually yes. writes what he 100%. wants to write rather than, you know, getting ahead of himself like so many authors do. 100%. And then we end I mean, up waiting. Be, mm-hmm. I don't want to be, like, self-aggrandizing too much here, but, you know, he's inspired us, right? We would never have made this. This is, The whole thing is about Joe Abercrombie. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, you know, us being here, you know, Joe, let us fill in the gap a little bit. We'll take over for a bit. You know, we'll, we'll make the content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be your uh, what's that? George R. R. Martin's ghostwriters or um, Elio Garcia and Linda oh, yeah, Antonson. We'll be we'll be right. the Elio and Linda for you. Yeah, we'll be your we'll, we'll, we'll be your lore ifs. keepers. We'll make yeah. the YouTube videos. We'll yeah. make the memes. We'll make all the shit. You know, you you fucking take your time. Complete the series as it should be, and we will. We got your back, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, bo- we we'll boost you. your shit. Yeah, we'll boost your shit on TikTok. That's what we'll do. <laughs> 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 we'll, yeah. TikTok. Uh. <laughs> so I think so I think Wisdom of Crowds for a lot of people and for myself included was like I, I remember like putting down I pre I pre ordered Wisdom of Crowds and it showed up like the day it fucking released and I was like I I read it in probably a collective like twenty hours. Like it was I I inhaled it. And um <laughs> and I remember at the very end, like that that moment kind of the, the mask drops is when Leo stabs Lord Marshall Forest, Forest right? <gasps> yeah, it's really, yeah. And I, I remember it's it literally just snowballs from there. I think so. So Brandon Sanderson, there's a term for when he ends his books. It's called the Sander Lanch, and it's like an avalanche of shit happens right at the end of the book. Like it's one of the coolest. <laughs> it's one of the coolest things. Like everything that you and maybe things that you didn't even think would happen are everything's going to happen at once. And you can you just buckle your seatbelt, Bucko, because you're on a fucking ride. And um that's kind of what happened with wisdom of crowds. Like everything just popped off at once. Like all the, all the shit that was boiling. Cause it is, I think the pacing of wisdom of crowds is weird. I think like you spend a lot of fucking time in agile with the, with the, he, uh, Joe must love the French revolution, right? He must love the Russian revolution. Yeah. He must, he must love those two things because mm-hmm. as a history teacher, I sit there and I'm like, oh, okay. Like there's, there's They're your fucking, uh, but Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, there's my Jean, there's my Jean Paul Marat and there's my mm-hmm. like, um, uh, What's his fucking face? The crazy guy, from- Robespierre. Robespierre, thank Pierre, you. There's my, yeah. there's my Robespierre. And, uh, <laughs> thanks. For I mean, that one up. definitely there that connection because yeah, I, I think the cover for the Wisdom of Crowds is literally the painting of the uh, storming of the Bastille. That makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. I think is it? Yeah, I, I think the like it it happens really fucking fast. Like I like Le- like Orso does not get a never a moment's peace. Right? He never he does not when he gets back to Adjua everything just all hell breaks loose yeah and it's like it's like a what i didn't love now i remember thinking this when i opened the book and then when i was about midway through the book i didn't love that joe put a little people chapter like maybe 50 pages into the book Mm, i felt like you think it it, it, it gets to the point where it doesn't feel earned i think yeah i felt like i needed more time Mm. to like fucking marinate on stuff and back right like 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 trouble with peace is probably my second favorite i think my i think my My favorite favorite. it's my i think my 
Yeah, I think my favorite is Best Served Cold, and I think my second favorite is The Trouble with Peace. I fucking, they're, I they're close, bro. <laughs> yeah, it it's your. If you had a gun to my head, I'd probably just shit my pants and not be able to answer. But <laughs> um, and then and then I'd get shot in the head. But you know, I I'd like that's what my two picks would be like. I, Best Served Cold opened the series up for me. I really like. Like when I read the first Law trilogy, I think I was at a spot where I was like, the, I, I mean, Last Argument of Kings was fucking incredible, and I was like, Jesus, that is different from anything that I've ever read. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go get Best Served Cold right now. I'm gonna read it right now. And I read it, and I did not know what I was walking into. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, this is good. I was like, this is. And then I read the heroes, and I was like, what? I was like, what is happening? Like, what? Is... And then I and then I read Red Country, and I I don't think so. I mean, there's certain things that like Sanderson does that can be considered like fantasy western or whatever. And I, I like Stephen King has like the gunslinger and all this shit. Like, there's all there's all kinds of like I've never read any like Stephen King fantasy, so don't like quote me on that. But um, but like fantasy western's been done, sci-fi western's been done. But like, there's something about a first law western that is so I I fucking I love um like the Clint Eastwood westerns, like the spaghetti oh, yeah. westerns, yeah. and the and even the the mostly the revisionist shit, and I think that's what Red Country pulls from is like like Unforgiven is yeah. like oh my god it, yeah he talked yeah. about it he talked about how, like that was the big influence in yeah and Unforgiven it, I, is so I, fucking ridiculous oh I went into the shit blind and I was reading it and I was like this is like Unforgiven I was like this is just like it was like it was like Unforgiven it was like. uh um, true grit, very, very true gritty with a kid. You know, you got, you got a couple kids, you know, you got, you're looking for whatever you're hunting somebody. Um, and also very like three ten to you, but like, I was like, this is like the, this is where I'm at. I love this shit. And a lot of people give red country a lot of guff. And I think it's all fair stuff. Usually. I think, I think what um, it is, is, I think is how Westerns, um, translate onto the page. Yeah. They're slow. Especially, especially, <laughs> especially when, like, I, like to be honest with you, uh, Red Country. Like, I, I like fantasy. I am not well versed in the different uh, novels and authors. Like, I've ever since like First Law, like I've like doing this podcast and everything. I've only learned of like the King Killer Chronicles and the, I think it's called the Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. Yeah, I haven't done that one yet. Yeah, that's I heard something... that's right. Like, hey, good, yeah, I enjoyed it. Right, yeah. and I've heard of all these authors. I haven't gotten to them yet. Like literally, yeah. it's <laughs> like a song of ice and fire was my introduction to fantasy. If right, mine too. Yeah. Right. If you're not counting Harry Potter, because like I don't know what you call that, like young adult fiction, whatever the fuck. Like then why? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you initialized oh, what I said. Beautiful. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah, That's that why you get fifty lashes. That is why you get hey! fifty lashes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> to the camps. <laughs> to the camps. And, oh, that was awesome! <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I like I do realize that like for me like there there's a I guess there's a different like tonality between like westerns and fantasy, and then when you combine them, it's it's maybe it's like an incongruence. And I know you said like it's been done before. Uh, Will you said that sci-fi westerns and uh, fantasy so, westerns have been done before? But I yeah. I'm not aware of that. So yeah, I, I guess I that's where I thought it came from that initial like resistance to Red Country. But the more I read Red Country, man, the more it just fucking sinks in. Yeah, me. it's it's I love so I listen specifically when I do yard work. I listen to the standalones. That's like my that's my oh, fucking really. Yard. That's your yeah. Trailer. So so I have like I have this image of myself like scrubbing our front deck, like our front porch, uh -huh. um, to like to the scene where like the ghosts not the ghosts the, um, the dragon people are trying to like sneak down into um square not square deal um uh, beacon beacon thank you and um, right. and they get they get blown away with the yeah, this is the master of war right here guys <laughs> on fire oh, oh, oh that's um, don't say that. you, i know it's <laughs> you fucked up george has been oh george what's going on here, here. All right. This if you want to call, this will not be allowed. <laughs> if you want to call, if you want to call history of the real world lore, then by all means. But um, no, that's cool. That, then that's true. George is much more educated than all of us combined. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I have this image of myself like scrubbing my front porch to the to the dragon people trying to sneak into Beacon and getting blasted by a fucking cannon and Casca being like, oh, there they are. Like, like that's that's. I have like a bunch of like I'll be doing like random tasks and I have like 
images associated with certain chapters in the standalones. It's so funny. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that really that really broke it open for me. And I think um, I think people are like clamoring for more fantasy. And like Sanderson writes fast, but I think um, like you need a break from some of that. Sometimes it's like it's not sugary sweet, but sometimes it's like the, the it can be a bit too much. Yeah, the stakes aren't like Stormlight's a little different, but I think in like. I don't even know. I don't know. It's such a good. He's got such a good balance between like being super like grim, but there's usually a happy ending, right? Like Sanderson's pretty big on like people, people, you know, doing the right thing are gonna they're gonna eke out a victory somehow, and it's it's not. Yeah. It might not. It might not be the victory that you want, um, and it might not look the way you want. You might have had to sacrifice. There's always sacrifice, right? Like that's a good. You got to learn and you got to work, and there's mm-hmm. always no one ever get no one ever gets shit for free in um in. Sanderson's work, which is good. I like I like that. I, so even though it is like a little more lighthearted and like there is like some ha- some glimmers of hope all the time. There's a lot of hope. Um, people have to work for it, and there's some shitty fucking parts. Some people go through some shit in Sanderson stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think like First Law is a really cool like um, I don't know. Like if you're looking for something different, like that's just it's just the place to go. Like yeah. it, yeah. you get you get everything. Like it's not I don't know. People call it grim dark. And I think it is, but I think it's 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 incredibly human, right? Like sure. everybody, you can relate. I think it's the most relatable fantasy, right? Like you can relate to fucking anybody. Like there's just shit exactly they say. It. Yeah, there's just mm-hmm. shit they say, and you're like, I felt that before. Like dog, like Dogman being like, "Fuck, but I need to piss." Is like every that's my <laughs> image. Like, <laughs> dude, no joke. Like I was coaching this weekend, and I coach I coach cross country, and I was like by the start line with my kids, and my like guts tightened up. And my like bladder, I thought I was gonna piss my pants, and I was like, "Wait a minute, I'm not running, dude. Chill the fuck out." Like I and I remember all the time, like you know, me and me and the co- the coach I work with were always like, "Hey, you gotta like make sure you hit the bathroom like an hour before you run. You can't be like on the line and then be like, oh my god, I gotta pee,' and then try to go. Like it's not gonna work." Um, but I remember like every time, like getting to the line, like being like guts and knots, and like having to feel like oh i gotta piss one more time jesus christ and then i'm running my race uncomfortable and it's like it was always like that so when dog man's like every time he goes to a fight he's like damn it but he needed to piss like i fucking i felt that like <laughs> preach, <Yeah. bro>. preach. <laughs> i understand what you're saying like when i used to when i wrestled in the, throughout my school years same thing before my wrestling meets i like out of nowhere just a sudden like a weight in my stomach I was like oh um me in the bathroom are gonna have to be uh Really good friends for about the next twenty minutes. Give me a second. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Every time, it, it's insane. And I think part of that too is like it's so funny. Like coaching now, like I, I, I never liked running. Like, and so when, so that whole like segment where Giselle is like trying to train, and Gorst is running like ten miles a day. Like, dude, like I, like I get it. Like <laughs> Giselle, Giselle doesn't like it, <laughs> and I didn't like it either. But I did it for the team, and I was decent. So it was like, but like I don't know. I, I got kind of. I guess I got like pressured into it, not pressured into it, but like everybody I knew was doing it. And like my dad was a, was a freak runner growing up. And so like, I don't think he could have ever envisioned a world where I wasn't on the track team. And I just, I didn't love the the act of running. I still don't. Um, but, sucks. but, uh, but I know, but now I know the sport and like, I can go coach it, but I, you know, I get, I don't know, it's just so fucking relatable. Like there's so many little things that happen and you're like, Oh my God, that's like this fucking time that I don't know. And I, I think that I think that's why so much of the first law is so enjoyable to read because you read it and like you said, it's extremely you're relatable. Mm-hmm. You're like that's oh I know what that's like, <laughs> and you know that's it. Whenever you look kind of look back on your own interactions or actions on things, and you realize, oh, it's just like that person in the first law did it. It kind of helps you kind of like learn a little <laughs> bit about yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whether yeah. It's bad or good. That's true. That's true. Uh, it it reminds like we literally just the episode that's you know coming out prior to this we just talked about how we've all been there at a dinner table where there's an argument going on between the heads of the table we're talking about like Con Neil and Baez and before yep. they hanged yep. and, and brother brother Longfoot <laughs> is literally just like this is uh this is great food and then like they're all just staring daggers and he's just like never. Never. Really. <laughs> <I didn't say. laughs> yep. Yep. Like, and we've big, all been yeah. there. We've all been big, there. Yeah. 
It's those and, big and, family, like it's those big family fucking Christmas dinners where everybody's like exactly. screamingly screaming at each other in the kitchen about like nonsense, and then you all go sit down and you're like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly." And I think that we talked about this before. We know that like Joe, he had uh, he. He had undergone some in, uh, education in regards to like uh, psychology and like the human condition, and it's very evident in the writing, I believe. And oh, I, think, 100%. I think George and Harrison, I met, you know, will you you might agree as well. And there are plenty of times or moments where even like I'm reading something and I'm like, oh, that reminds me of something that happened in my childhood that I haven't thought about in 20 years because I just repress everything. Oh, great, yay! <laughs> <laughs> because as a man no one's taught me to whatever anyway, yeah 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 but you, I think, you know and it's, it's I, think, I feel like these kind of books they're so they're cathartic in a lot of ways they really are yeah i think too like um i don't know like i did i did a grad program um for teaching in like i guess i, I graduated with my degree in like 2017 and um okay pimp I just like, oh yeah. Um, and, uh, thank you. And, uh, I, um, I like went looking for I don't know. Like I stayed, I did like a, like a practicum kind of, and I like taught as part of the program for a year and got my degree. And then I decided to like stay at that school. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. It was private and I, I Catholic and like, I, there was a lot of shit going on that I just did not agree with. And, um, no, you know, no, they, they gave me a lot. The school closed. Like I, I could tell that it was kind of on its way out, and so I wanted to get into public school as fast as I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, that that switch was not easy. Um, and so I think like part of what was so like I guess helpful from first law is like you like I, I just it was kind of like I I don't know like I left that private school and then I had to like I was a classroom teacher for two years and I had to go like sub like I had to go be like a day to day sub making like no no money. And um and I had like I had, like took kind of a big risk. Like I met my wife in grad school and we like started dating and so we wanted to like move out and get a place together. And so we got a place like where we thought would be like somewhere halfway between where she was currently working and where I might work. And it like I didn't get a job. Like I like I went the whole summer looking for a job. I didn't get a job. And this was like fall of twenty eighteen. So I had to go like day sub like elementary school. Mm -hmm. and like landscape and work at Trader Joe's and like all the shit. And like, I kept, I eventually like got back. I got like a couple of long-term sub jobs, but they would end. And then I'd be like right back at square one. I'd be like, fuck, like now I get, it's just not, it didn't feel like it was going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think like fantasy in general, like having, like having something to like reach for, like, Oh, I want to finish this series. Oh, I want to like that. Like that was very like grounding in reality. Like I, I read wheel of time on my fucking like lunch breaks at Trader Joe's. Like it was pretty, it was it was a cool spot like i don't know and i could like because i was subbing like i wasn't like sometimes i'd be proctoring a test and so i just like whip out a book and be like you know what? i'm just gonna walk around the room reading this and um that was helpful you know it kept my mind busy and it definitely like made me feel better you know and then when i did when i you know, I, I got hired well covid hit and everything just like shit the bed but <clears throat> i got hired right um, in the summer of COVID. So it like, it kind of like boosted me to the, to getting there, you know, it was mm -hmm. not a fucking fun time, but you know, it still, it still isn't sometimes, but it is like, I don't know, something to be said about like, you never know what you're going to get every day. You yeah. know, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Now nah, enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> We're interviewing you. That's the point. Yeah. Of all this. So, oh. and so, for the poll for our community interaction segment, which is spoilers, they are now in spoiler territory. So we did our favorite non-POV characters for round four. I tried to keep it like with Styrian characters, um, but then I realized that a lot of Styrian characters just don't have that much screen time. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and just throw Brother Longfoot in there for a bit of chaos. Um, I'm still pretty happy though <laughs> with what turned out. I figured Vitari was going to win. Uh, excuse me. But Brother Longfoot did way better than I expected. I mean, I love Brother Longfoot. I just didn't expect him to, you know, just be that good, that, that popular. There was a lot of comments, people saying, oh, he's so great. I love seeing him on screen, even if he is kind of annoying, uh, which is hilarious. So 
Thank you for the people who voted. Uh, I'm sorry for those who listen on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we have been lacking in posting the polls there. To be honest, it's a little harder with POV characters because that means we're going to have to cut two characters. And there's already a lot of characters to go through. But down to the details. We got about 400 votes. And Vitari uh, won with 222 votes, which, of course, she's in so many She's in so many uh, uh, parts of the story. <laughs> and she is pretty hilarious, even with Pacey's accent. Although, I did find it interesting. There are multiple people in here saying Vitari's accent was, like, uh, annoying, which is interesting. I never thought of it that way. Like, I never thought her accent was annoying. It's very distinct, and, I, yes, it can be grating. And I always did imagine her having a little bit more of an attractive accent, but at the same time, it's more like she kind of looks okay, and then every other aspect about her is just, like, grating and br- and blunt, and brutal. <laughs> But still, I understand why Vitari won. I expected her to win. That's this whole poll, this section, the the hysteria section, quote unquote, is for Vitari, really. Grand Duke Orso did surprisingly well. I didn't think he was gonna get any votes. I thought he'd get like one or so, <laughs> maybe two. Uh, I thought Vitari and Brother Longfoot would get them all, really. Um, Duke Grand Duke Orso got thirty votes. Uh, Day got fifty votes, which I like Day. But I didn't expect her to get third place. I thought that was going to go to Duke Orso. Well, actually, no, that's not that's not right. I actually did think that Day was going to do pretty good. But uh, Day is pretty fun to have around. Her eating habits uh, are like the only kind of character that eats food. I feel like not many other characters even eat food. <laughs> Everyone else is just doing other things or drinking or something. Uh, Grand Duke Rogant got uh, eight votes, which... I would suspect that's why he's last. I mean, he doesn't have as much screen time as the other people, not as much depth, um, other than his peeing fetish, which, I mean, we all have our own thing, I guess, but it is a little gross. Uh, Brother Longfoot, 77 votes, second place. Bam, baby. Um, I can't believe I almost forgot about him when I first put up the poll. Um, But how can you not like Brother Longfoot? He adds so much... Uh, hilariosity to Before the Hanged along with Lattice Law. Those two people, uh, and honestly Brother Longfoot in the Blade itself too is hilarious. Just his introduction. He's like some guy who you think is going to be so wise and you understand the way the world works. And he kind of does, but also he's he's kind of a little prick. And then Malthus, or, you know, Pacey always says Malthus. It kind of sounds like but his name is Malthus. <laughs> But Malthus got uh, 11 votes, which I was surprised he got any as well. I thought he was going to be down there, which he is, I guess, down below where Grand Duke or, uh, Rogan is. But his kind of his character is consistently bland and kind of scared, and like a he's kind of like that boss who you have who is like the company man. He's just like tired of living and just working his job, but also he doesn't want to die and this is what he's always done so it's fine um i like that i've always liked Malthus. but that's our poll our community interaction segment in terms of uh comments i really like what people said about vitari um somebody was sharing some shank theories i know the boys would be really happy to see all of the comments on our own sorry we didn't respond as much this week uh we just Honestly, we guys, George moved, and uh, I, work's been crazy for me. So, But there are some cool stuff and interactions between people. Some people were talking about the shank theory. Some people were talking about you know how annoying Brother Longfoot was, uh, why Vitari is so interesting. Somebody compared her to like an NPC being, but being smart. She's, she's like the NPC who's like a, a companion, but also she's got her own shit going on the whole time. Uh and that's why I think she has I think she has a chance at winning the championship. So next week we'll do round five and then the week after that we'll do round six. And then there'll be the the maybe I'll do semifinals if there's gonna be more, because there might be more, maybe one more. We'll see. It should be fun though. But back to the guest spot with uh Sir Spaceman. Bye. As the interview comes to a close close uh george do you have anything you want to ask will now that we've no, got him on I think, the air? Um, 
I think we've uh, covered a lot of stuff today. I think that's good. I yeah. have, I have one more question. Ooh. Well, I say I have a gun to your head, right? Oh no. And we're talking, <laughs> and we're talking, we're talking a big one, Magnum, forty-four, right? Right to your feet, oh. right to your dome. Well, I just shit my pants and pissed my pants and cried, and now you just canoed, canoed the back of my head. All right, all right. All right. I didn't even get the question. I didn't I know, get the question I yet. <laughs> it's, like blocked it. it's like blocked it when he's like, why are they crying already? I haven't even started to ask the questions. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. It's a, it's a two-parter. It's a two-parter. Um, Go for it. Uh, it. Would you rather... How would you want the first law series to be adapted? Either film or TV series? And the second part is or anime. Ooh. Harrison, we're adults here. Come on, get over it. <laughs> no, bro, bro, are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, who, who invited the Gen Z kid over? Yeah, like, yeah. Get, get, get over get over there, Zoomer. Get over there, Zoomer. <laughs> listen to it. Listen to it for a minute. Listen to it for a minute. How else? Are they going to show the inner monologue of a character, which is the greatest part of Jabba Crombie's part Ooh, of work? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. You break the fourth wall. You ever seen House of Cards? <laughs> Boy, it's just going to be a fucking joke so series. to literally turn and look I'll at tell the you camera. That. Yeah. <laughs> but, he, but, do, but you can't do it in the same exact way as done in the books, obviously. Damn, damn it, Jeff. I don't like how, how hostile you've been lately. <laughs> First of all, oh you came on here angry this at is me. Like that, this is like that dinner table scene. This is just, this is hey, like, hey, shut the like fuck up, Will. All right? All right? <laughs> <laughs> the parents are talking, Will, all right? Will, I'm never mind. Right now. <laughs> never mind. Never um, mind. Sorry, Dad. Okay, let, me, let me start with part two. Um, part okay. two. I'll tell you how they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it like David Lynch is doing. Tell you that much. Um <laughs> You said David Lynch. <laughs> yeah, they're not doing it. They're not going to do the inner monologues like David Lynch is doing, where they like zoom in on a character's face and they're like, perhaps he is the Quincy Like, don't, no, 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 no we're not doing that. No, 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 no. You mean David Fincher? I, no, no it's David, David Lynch. David Lynch made Dune. Oh, oh, you're talking about Dune. I also, never mind. Yeah, Dune. Yeah, sorry. I, yeah. I, I was talking about something else, but okay. Yeah, with uh, <laughs> with um, yeah, yeah, with okay. Kyle Kyle McLaughlin and uh, and fucking um, all those other Sting is in it. Sting is in that dude. Right, right, right. I'll yeah, be, it's, I'll, it's be honest, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I, I did not see that Dune. I have. That's I'm, fine. Yeah, I'm that's doing. fine. You can you can keep yourself. You oh, I guess. yeah, yeah. You're good. I felt um, insane in that. Well, can you see? Yeah. Um, <laughs> TV. Uh, I think it, I think a show would be TV. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. God, I just I don't know. Um, it's it, Lord of the Rings was done in a way that I think set the bar for fantasy adaptations, right? Like I, I know people that complain about it. They're like, oh, you know, where's Tom Bombadil? Where? I'm like, shut the fuck up about Tom Bombadil. <laughs> can you imagine if Tom Bombadil comes out and he's like, hi, Derry Ho, Derry, hey, Derry Ho, where is my wife Goldberry? And I'd be like, and she comes out of the water and she's like, hello, husband. Like, no, no fuck away. Um, uh, no, stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think. I think TV could do it because you could, there's so many like story beats where you could end an episode, right? Like I could just see like, um, I, oh God. Um, especially like not Nothing's blade itself. Changed. Yeah. Not blade itself. I think blade itself is going to suffer being adapted. I think it's, I don't know. there's a few moments, right? Well, Whenever there's so, he there's fucking a few blows moments. everybody up and he's like, nothing's changed. Yep. There's a few moments. I um, have an idea, but I want you to finish. Will. I want you to finish. Uh, let me keep my milk, milk in the bucket for a second. Um, oh, go for, go for. so, uh, no, I, I, I just, I don't know. Part of me like doesn't even want to see it adapted either, but I do like, I do, I want the media to be out there because I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. even though Amazon had a tough time developing the first season of wheel of time, which I do not want to get into because you guys, I don't think you guys are wheel of time people, right? No, not really. No. Yeah. So I don't want to touch that. Um, but let's just say that Amazon, there were, there were a few things that were like out of Amazon's control and choices that they like adaptation choices that they made that like uh -huh. some worked, some didn't. Um, and I think a lot of people were bullshit over a lot of the choices and I'm not, I'm just happy to see fucking wheel of time on TV. Um, <laughs> I, I feel about rings of power, bro. So, oh. 
so Rings of Power, uh, Rings of Power is much better than the Amazon Wheel of Time series. There, I said yes. it. There's going to be people that are mad. It is. I think it is. Yes. Um, it's. I like it. Uh, I don't know. I do too. I, think I do too. Okay. I think you have to. Well, like, thank was, you. <laughs> there was one. There was one part. I watched the fifth episode yesterday, and there was one part. I guess, I guess I watched it Friday. I don't even know. Days melt together. I guess I watched it yesterday. Um, there was one part that like genuinely made me smile, and I was like, you know what? That's more than Wheel of Time did. Yeah. Like, I, I think it was a fucking song for me, dude. When they started singing that song and they were traveling, traveling across. Nope, I hated, I hated that so much. You did, you um, did. I don't <laughs> love. I don't. I me and my buddy talked about this on the phone. Shout out to Chris again. Uh, me and my buddy talked about this on the phone on Friday. Uh, we don't love the Hobbits in this. I don't um, love the Hobbits either. But that, the, song, Henry, the song was wait, fun. Wait, okay, wait, the song was wait, fun. Wait, uh, Harrison, wait. I'm not trying to rain on your parade. The song was fun. Damn it! Well, wait, 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 I'm just confused. This is literally just a dumb question from a, a Shuby, okay? Because I've only literally just watched Lord of the Ring movies. Um, are the Harfoots not different than the Hobbits? They are the uh, progenitors of some of the Hobbits that live in the Shire. What the holy shit? Because okay, they were they were apparently I've never read the Cimmerillion. I've read Wikipedia and I have not, but apparently the hobbits were nomadic at one point. And then the there's like three tribes of them and they migrated to the different there's like the Shire Hobbits, there's the store hobbits, and there's like the Bree Hobbits, right? Like there's like there's like the people that live on the river, there's the people that live like closer to the big people, which is like the Bree people. And then there's the Shire Hobbits and like Hobbits. Those are those are the Harfoots. I think the Harfoots settle in the Shire. Mm-hmm. Um, in there, like you know what, Will? We're, we're, yes. You know what we're gonna have to do, right? We're gonna have to just sit down and just fucking on a night like a Saturday night. We're gonna have to get on and just fucking get wasted, play games, and talk about random shit. Sounds like oh, a great idea. Good. <laughs> because good. we knew that we were gonna get along with you, but I do feel I not not to oh. pressure anybody that we are getting off topic. Back to the question at hand. Uh, yes, do you think TV series works better? Correct. I think TV series works better because of the story beats. Interesting. Okay, I, I agree. Yeah. And so, okay, Harrison agrees. George, do you agree? Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. I think if they tried to do films, it would just not work. You okay, you know, we're talking two much. hours for each book. You'd lose so much. Okay. Yeah, you'd lose a ton. Well, do you want to know my my opinion? I do. No. Wow. Oh, George. George, you want to take this road trip down to the Americas? You very nice. <laughs> um, honestly, I think for the first trilogy, movies, right? For the first trilogy, movies, just because, again, oh, fuck that shit. Chill, chill out, Harrison. Let me explain. <laughs> There's not a lot of plot. Even the plot that does like pick up in the second and third book, it's not a lot of it. A lot yeah, of it. Yeah. So everything is okay, character. Okay, okay, okay. I know what you're saying. Wait, wait, I'm not done. I'm not okay, done. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Right, right. Go ahead. Let him speak. So, so, Let so, yeah, him thank, speak. Thank you. Thank you. So, first three books, first three movies, right? You can make them two and a half hours, and I feel like you get a lot done in two and a half hours. A lot of Marvel movies are done in two and 45 minutes, two hours and 45 minutes, and they this still makes no sense. And I think a very good <laughs> director can do that well. Then I think Best of Cold is done in uh you know uh, si- uh one season maybe eight episodes 10 episodes whatever maybe each episode is a chapter of like maybe the first one's like you know when mons are going off and all that jazz and then each episode is like a whole hour different long city. different city yes then i think the heroes should be a three part mini series each day mm. each episode is a day of the battle mm. then i think the red country should be Ah, see, I love Western, so fuck it, Western movie. But then I did like Godless on a series, so eh, whatever. And then Age of Madness. Age of Madness, a lot is packed into it, so that one I'm still struggling with. But that was my general premise so far. Okay, Jeff. Okay, Jeff. Here's here's my counter argument to that. Okay, I mean, it's wrong, but go ahead, Adetis. You're old. We'll we'll say that... We'll say that it's not going to be an anime series, right? In anime, we get to see what's going on in people's heads. But as a TV series like Game of Thrones or something, right? Mm. <clears throat> the reason why I don't think the original trilogy should be a se- like a movie uh-huh. is because... Let's look at House of the Dragon. 
That's like a 25 page. That's like one chapter in a book. Mm -hmm. Done. And look how much they've drawn out. I look how much character and how many things they've drawn out. I think that first law could easily get away with setting up. Think about this. Set up the first law series. The the first book is one season. You have 10 hours of content. You have it ending in them fighting the practicals as a quote unquote final battle. And that you feel completely different than the way you did at the beginning. You don't know if Logan's actually that good of a guy. You don't know if Baez is actually a, a friendly wizard. You're not sure where Farrah fits in the story, and you're not really quite sure if, if Giselle becomes a good person. That's first season, second season, before they hanged. You get the war in the north, you get them traveling across the continent. Third season, you get them fighting. Third, now here's the thing. Here's the difference. Fourth season, you introduce Monscara Makato as a as a di- completely different character in the distance. Her fighting with a thousand swords with Bena. Season season five, you know, you have it a part of the series where Maza basically breaks away and has her whole little fucking side plot. But at the same time, you have Logan in Red Country. Ooh. Making mm-hmm. a family at the same time. So it's like all concurrent and like running. Yeah, it's, it's each all other. done like concurrent. It. But you know, and then you have it sprinkled right. into the whole entire series. You have fucking Chev and Javra fucking dicking around the whole time. Uh, <laughs> that'd be funny. <laughs> oh my god. Um, right. but, but my point, what I'm trying to say is that like you can't have that concurrent. And second, like the thing is, like the books, the first three books, like we can all agree, right? Characterization is the strongest part of those books, right? There's only so much you can get out of that. That like right now, we all we know from House of Dragons is what five episodes, six episodes. We we don't know if it's actually gonna be good. I got tricked, okay? I follow Game of Thrones, the HBO series from the beginning, and I was tricked after season four. Fuck that. I'm not falling for it again. Okay, I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing <laughs> right. it. Hey, all right, no, bro. Right? I'm hey, not doing bro. it. I'm not doing it. Bro, and there's take not, it easy, there's... man. <laughs> take it easy sweetheart all I'm, saying, <laughs> we ha- we ha- all I'm saying is that I think just because that a lot of the plot in the first three books is a lot of like setup and like you know everything's character driven that the first three books you can do those movies you know and like you're not gonna turn away the audience you're not gonna have them waiting, like, okay, what's gonna happen next? Like, we get it. Logan's this person. Glock does this person. Baez is kind of confusing, but okay. Giselle's a prick in the beginning. Like, I, th- I feel like movies, it, it gets it across in a more seamless fashion. That's my opinion. Oh, I don't want to be part of this argument anymore. I'm scared. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I think... <sighs> You have good points. The only problem, Jeff, I don't, I'm not picking on you. The only problem with Go moving from movies to series, like midway through your continuity, is like I I'm not keeping up with the Marvel series. Like I, I literally do not have time to do it. And like mm. when it was when it was like a movie every like couple months, like I could I could go to the movies as like a thing. But like right now, it's just like an oversaturation, and, and it's like I don't have Disney Plus. I don't feel like getting Disney Plus again. I had it as like a promo and then I was like, you know what? I really, there's nothing on here that I fucking need to watch. And then I'm like missing all the Marvel shit. And I'm like, Oh, well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like that, that transition from like, well, we're going to put the movies in theaters and then we're going to release on a streaming service. Like, and that's not to say like HBO max does, they could make, you know, they could make movies or something, right? Like they could do, they could do them as a, as a trilogy of movies that they release digitally instead of in theaters. Right. Or they could do both. And then the series is on HBO Max. It doesn't move anywhere. It's just not released in theaters. And it's like, it, you could do that. Like, it, it's, there's a lot of things that could be done. And I know, like, I don't know, like, I know Sanderson's in talks with Hollywood trying to get, like, adaptations for Miss Porn and Stormlight off the ground. I, I, I'd, like, bet my bottom dollar that Joe Abercrombie has talked to, he has, right? Like, he has talked to yes, people no about way. this. And I agree. And, and here's yeah. my point. Here's my point. Like you talk about the oversaturation, like for example, you said with Marvel and Disney Plus, from what two thousand eight, right? They just been pumping out things. So we're talking about fourteen years. What is that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But we're not talking about that level of, of uh, saturation. And no, you're right. You're right. Commercialization. Whereas, I, like, if you know you're doing three movies, you have a couple series, 
and then maybe you know because Abercrombie, like, how long is he gonna keep writing for Saul? We don't know. That. Right, right. So that's what I mean. Where I'm like, I like, I feel like the format of like whatever the visual medium is should uh, work to serve the story that's told best. Yeah. Sure. I think I was drawing everything out in series, series, series. Because like, yeah. the, like if you think about it, all right, Lord of the Rings came out what 2001, 2002, whatever, 2003. And uh that was like what, fi- you know, a couple, you know. All right, let's say maybe two decades ago, maybe if you're old like me, <laughs> right? But then Rings of Power comes on and that's on Amazon and you know, people have their thoughts about it. I have my thoughts about it. Whatever, but that's a different medium. But it's still on. It's still on uh, film. Don't forget the Hobbit trilogy. No. Oh, right. Forget. Forget the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. Forget it. Forget that ever happened. Yeah. In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. I, I really. Some ways, yes, yeah. No, I. Not a big I fan. I agree. But do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. Yeah. Any reason why you can't deviate from certain formats? That's yeah. I was. I was more. I wasn't as much like on the saturation end. I was more on like the switching from the movie release to like the streaming service release, like that. Mm. Like and, and losing people oh, there, like because oh, you would you would release, yeah. That was more my angle. Like I wasn't worried about like oh I, we're gonna have like a Marvel Cinematic Universe of first law. You fucking imagine. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, I that was more. I get I get what you're saying, but I think I just hashed it out of my head. Like you could digitally release movies on this and then just make the show on the same streaming service as the movies that you're releasing. Like at the same. I don't know. I think HBO would do a really good job of first. Yeah, line. honestly, honestly, um, yeah, it has yeah, to be. I think it would HBO, have to be. HBO is the only one I honestly would. Yeah. I like the Witcher. It would have I, to be. I do like the Witcher. I do, and so maybe Netflix can uh, George. do justice. But like, I'm not so sure. Like, I, I, I don't know. Amazon. I don't know what's going on. On Amazon. Like, The Rings of Power is. It's like it's kind of it's slow pretty for me. It's so like, it's good, but it's also different. Than the fucking here, the, the, the so <clears throat> I am just gonna go ahead and wrap it up here, and we can talk more after we stop it here. Absolutely. But the only thing I want to say here is, um, you know, either way, if we get a series in the first law, it's gonna be fucking awesome, and it would be awesome so to great. see aspects that we didn't see previously. Because obviously the books leave things out, you know, right. like the time gaps, and you know what kind of relationships people have with each other. So it'd be very cool to see that. So I just kind of want run around off with 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 that. Okay. Well, we thank you, Will, aka oh. Sir Spaceman. We appreciate you having you know taking the time to come out here and do an episode with us. We really do appreciate, it. and the fact that you're our first guest uh, speaker, interviewee, what do you want to call it? We really do appreciate it. Right. It was the biggest pleasure. Um, and I was, I have never been on a podcast before, so I was incredibly excited and nervous and jittery. Um, and now I'm just leaning back in my chair, drinking my beer, chilling. Um, but no, thank you guys so much. Like, I was so excited when I got that message. I was like, oh, this is fucking, this is, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> this is going to be. We hope you had a good time, man. Yeah, I did. I had a fucking great time. Great. Great. Awesome. Churlish Grimbungle. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Roadhouse Swayze, uh, Baba Bool, Bremer Gorst, XLRIV48, um, and I'm missing somebody. Fuck. Nope, that's it. I, we lost Angle Killer somewhere in translation. Um, but thank you guys so much for, um, helping me run this shit show of a page. And, um, I would, we would not, this, this community would not exist without those those people that I have mentioned. Um, they are my absolute go-tos for all things first law. And even just chatting drunk in the, in the closed council chat that we have between us um, at like midnight on Sunday nights. That's, it's really fun. So thank you guys. All right. Well, everyone, that's our show. And we want to thank you for listening and supporting this podcast, especially this special guest episode with Sir Spaceman, AKA Will. Lord of the House of the Meme Maker subreddit. As you all know, this is a passion project for the three of us, and your support does mean a lot to us, and I hope you know that. And join us next week as we do a special guest episode again with the Bloody Niner, who's going to talk about the future of the First Law series. Thank you.
Thank you all for listening. Um, make sure to uh, follow Circle of the World podcast on their social medias at Reddit, Instagram, TikTok, and go check out the Circle of the World podcast website, which is brand new. Um, if you haven't already, like we said, please subscribe to us on whatever podcast app you would like to use, you know, whatever floats your boat. And please make sure to rate and review as this helps us spread our reach, as you know. Thank you all again for listening. 